Hi there, this is Robert Fremantle to uh, tell you a little bit more about Their Fated Travels. Okay, so in its original form, we decided as a gaming group to play a, uh, a role-playing tabletop game. <coughs> uh, the group all decided that we would choose Warhammer because that was the world we all knew best and a lot of us had never done it before. So I wasn't going to be GM for a change. I was actually going to get to play somebody. Now I'd had this character... Maestro, uh, the wizard, knocking around uh, in my head, wait, waiting to do something with him. I didn't know if I was going to be writing a solo story with him or whatever, but I think I was kind of like eyeing up that sort of thing. And then when Wuffrup came along, of course, well, it was it was a great chance to actually slot him in with a lot of other characters to interact with. And the other people, they kind of um, cottoned on to this idea of, of Maestro being a bit... Um, a bit different, as wizards go, a bit of a bit of a misfit, a bit of a weirdo, and uh, that they kind of came up with characters too that sort of fit this theme within their fated travels, sort of uh, people who uh, are around in that adventuring time. No one else would ever want to adventure or group with them, so they're forced to have to stick together. And you, you know, of course, you see that in life as well. But I think it's a bit of a different take on on the fantasy idea. I mean, while it's not as self-deprecating as, say, something like um, Terry Pratchett's Discworld, there are still elements to it, just just in fact of the characters being the way they are. There is one point later on in the story, in fact, where um, one of the characters does make mention about rats in a cellar and uh, how that's quite a common <laughs> uh, quest for adventurers to uh, n normally go on when they're starting out he believes. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of rebels, really, these, these characters. They aren't the sort of thing you would see uh, in, the, in a normal story. The other thing we wanted to avoid, we were very conscious about this, was the thing you see in a lot of other gaming groups where they will have one human, one elf, um, one dwarf, one halfling, and if there's any spaces left, maybe a, another human or two, or whatever. I mean, if this was a real functioning living actual world then every single adventuring group wouldn't be comprised of that sort of setup would they and nor are we well their fated travels started out actually in written form and that's how it is actually first produced each chapter as a direct result of what happens at the table so, I mean, I started putting those chapters out in several different sort of places, fanfiction.net, uh, on my DeviantArt page, and on various sort of uh, Warhammer forums. There, so it was getting its hits there, a little bit of a following, a minor minor following, I would say. From all the feedback I ever got about, about the series, though, I always found that uh, people most enjoyed the characters themselves. And that's quite right, really. The characters are written to to have a lot of backstory to them. I think essentially the strength of doing something in this manner by playing at the table first and then bringing that to the written story is that it's kind of like a process that you would go through in plotting. You know, you would plot the story out first and then write it. Some people are um, more meticulous about that process than others even. But uh, essentially the idea with that is is that you um you get you end up with characters that are really strong in uh, personalities because the players behind them have put a lot of thought process into them i personally helped uh, the other players develop their characters as well so i suppose that's why i was in a very unique situation uh, to be able to um write the story as i did because i had a sort of insight into all of the characters' mindsets. The other thing that uh, is a distinct advantage and e exciting element to doing it in this way rather than just writing a story is that, you know, when you're normally reading a story, you can sort of predict, well, these bad guys are going to get killed and the good guys is probably going to be a close call and then the good guys are going to win, obviously. And there's normally like a feeling of, oh, so-and-so is indestructible and what have you. Now, I'm not saying anyone lives, anyone dies, or who, or whatever in their fated travels. But what I am saying is that the potential to actually die for a character death, it wouldn't come about as a, as a decision by the writer. 
oh, yeah, it's time to kill him off. That will be a good plot line, right? No, it would happen because it's happened at the table. And so, in that way, there is a real danger you can feel to every encounter. There's a risk to whichever character or characters you like because they really are in actual danger, not just the whims of some writer. Unlike, say, uh, Gotrek and Felix, where while you're reading it, you pretty much feel that these two are indestructible and you don't quite feel that fear in, the, in on the same level. Now, obviously, taking something from the story form and then turning it into an audio book version is actually one heck of an undertaking when you come to actually do it in practical terms. And, I mean, the other thing is I jumped into this thing with the with the same naivety as I jump into everything else, this, this insane sort of... Uh, lack of thought oh yes i'll just do this then i'll put out the uh, the narration for it and and what have you i don't know i always just throw myself into these things well my motivation for doing it was uh, firstly so that anybody who might be blind or um, partially sighted might actually be able to enjoy the story and also uh, i knew a number of people who had extreme reading difficulty and were going to have to avoid the written piece of their fated travels and would never know how it goes. Or maybe some of my, the other people that I know that are just a tad too busy, maybe they would prefer to sort of download the file and listen to it on the move while, say, commuting. Now, I mentioned earlier about the uh, strength of the characters. I felt that with characters that had so much backstory and potential, the best way for me to show this was to go for the same format that you would see in the television program Lost. So a lot of flashbacks where we look back at the character and then straight back into the uh, the current action. I'm not saying that Their Fated Travels is going to have any, uh, any flash-forwards at all like Lost, but... You know. <laughs> But yeah, Lost is definitely part of the inspiration for producing it in that way. It's done very consciously. Uh, another element, again very similar to Lost, is a massive question mark over a lot of the characters. Oh, uh, what haven't they told us? What is being hidden here? And I found that from some of the uh, feedback, while their Fated Travels was being... Uh, putting out in its written form, uh, a lot of people were sort of um, desperate to know, or oh, what you know, what's the real deal with so and so? What's really going on here? You need to flesh it out. And the reply is, as always, well, we'll tease you with bits here and there, and you'll find out in good time when the adventure kicks off. It's a uh, storyline that uh, I came up with initially, and then I put forward to the GM who uh, further sort of designed it to make it table ready so that obviously there were still going to be things that were unexpected to me as well so that I could play my character uh, appropriately still uh, just like any of the others at the table. After uh, a number of chapters we then as a gaming group moved on to the written content in the books that which you would find in uh, Woofrup second edition books now, those books are indeed also reflected in this story. And as such, because they are the content of a different book, someone else's already uh, professionally produced book, but we did take part in them at the table, and they are part of our character's progression, we do touch upon them. But we touch upon them in a way that is... Uh, a lot more sort of character orientated we we focus on the thing that we bring to the story that it wasn't already in the book and that is the uniqueness of the way our characters approach the situations and the way they dealt with it the other thing is that we we then also bringing the journal forms as well because the journal forms are a good way of dealing with the fact that you're sort of working with some information from the books. And then later on down the line, we have other stuff that's not in the books, and then stuff that's in the books, and then stuff that's not in the books, and what have you. But we start off 
with the first five chapters uh, as all being between myself and the GM. 